Hello friends, welcome to Leg Life, and this is an exciting video, <laughs> yeah. because there's kind of two parts to this video. There's the first part where we just want to say thank you, because we just hit a crazy milestone here on YouTube. Yes, we did. And as part of that milestone, there are many of you who are new to our channel. We thought we would do, for the third time in our channel's <laughs> history, right. a little bit of a get to know us video. Mm -hmm. So the milestone we just hit um, is we, we just hit 25,000 subscribers on YouTube. Which is insane. Which is insane. Um, when we started this channel, we truly didn't believe we'd ever even hit a thousand. In fact, we so didn't believe that we would hit a thousand <laughs> that Sherry said early on, so one of Sherry's talents, and there are many, <laughs> is that she does one heck of a monkey face. I it's do. phenomenal. You were so sure we would never hit a thousand subscribers that you said, if we hit a thousand subscribers, I'll do my monkey face on a video. Correct. And I did. And you're going to have to go find that video because I'm not going to. You're not going to do it again? No. Dang it. I will say that was actually one of the things I was going to like toss on her and see if she would do. Absolutely not. But we, we really didn't think people would watch. We hoped no. even our family would, but even that was a huge question mark. <laughs> Maybe. And over the last, uh, gosh, eight and a half, coming up on nine years, yeah. we've just built the most amazing community. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we could we could make the longest video talking about all of the highs that we have had thanks to thanks to all of you. Yeah. But really, thank you so much. Twenty five thousand feels fake. And here's the thing: <laughs> on YouTube, that's not a huge number. It's a huge number to us. That's what I was just gonna say. But to us. It means the world. Yeah. Um, for just a little hit and record three times a week, yeah. you guys keep showing up. You keep telling your friends about it. More of you keep joining this channel. Yeah. And I just, uh, thank you. We appreciate you. Yes. Way more than you all could possibly ever know. Yeah. We're so thankful for all of you that you're here. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you for helping us get to 25,000. Insane. Yeah. And so when we were talking about what do we do, um, we thought, you know what? It's been a long time since we've done like a little get to know us video. Yeah. And here's the thing. I actually went back and looked. Oh. We have done two get to know us videos okay. in the history of our channel. The first one was in 2016. Okay. So a year after we started our channel. Okay. And the second one, the last one we did was in 2019. Well, so five years ago. You know what's crazy? What? It was March 29th, 2019 that we posted it. Whoa. This video is going up March 29th, 2024. That's crazy. Insane. <laughs> five <laughs> years <not> later. <laughs> so uh, most of these questions, we try to get questions that we've never necessarily directly answered before. Mm -hmm. uh, you may have heard us talk about some of this stuff in other videos. Yeah. Uh, we have a mixture of just like funny, dumb, light questions. <laughs> We've got a couple serious questions. Some that I had to think about the answer to. Yeah, we had a little... Ask him what my answer should be. A little discussion. <laughs> I don't know. And then at the end, Sherry's going to do her monkey face. And you I'm guys not, are... <laughs> not, I am not, sir. <laughs> Dang it. All right. So first of all, let's start with a question that I know is very different for you and I. Yeah. What time do you go to bed? Are you an, are you an early riser? Or are you a late to better? Or are you something totally else? Uh, I am usually early to bed and late to rise. That's, um, that's true. You are. <laughs> you are both. It's not early to bed, early to rise. Nope. No. Um, I am not a morning person. I am the exact opposite of a morning person. I don't usually wake up until like three o'clock in the afternoon. I can confirm. Um, but then I start getting tired around like seven p.m. I'm like, can I go to bed yet? Yeah. You about. I would say about eight p.m. I can see Sherry. Kind of look into the bedroom like, I could go to sleep. Do I have to stay awake much longer? <laughs> um, so I do usually try to go to bed about 9. I don't usually get to sleep until 11 or midnight. Mm -hmm. um, it's the way that my body works. And um, I do usually wake up a few times in the night. Um, and then I get up to my alarm in the morning. So, well, no, I, that's a lie. I don't get up to my alarm. You I get used up, to. I used to. I used to get right up to my alarm and I now get up to my, my sixth or seventh snooze. <laughs> also can confirm. So for me, I am very different. Yeah. I'm a night owl. I believe that my peak hours are midnight to 2 a.m. <laughs> That's when I'm the most creative. That's when I'm the most productive. Uh, I just, I love that time of night. And I think I love that time of night for the same reason that I hear morning people say that they love early mornings. 
it's quiet. There's yeah. like stillness. Um, you can focus on stuff. I love that. Yeah. And so there's a lot of nights that uh, late night, grab my laptop, go somewhere to work. Yeah. And so I am a, um, I am a late night um, and then kind of get up whenever I need to during the day. Yeah. I will say mornings, this isn't one of the questions, but mornings <laughs> are different for us because when I wake up, I'm awake. Yeah, you're not, I wouldn't say that you're like a morning person. No. Like you don't like jump out of bed at 5 a.m. But like when you wake up, you're awake and you're like, let's go. And that is so annoying to you. It's not, that's not me. He immediately wants to start talking. Like he will roll over and then start asking questions. And I'm like, it. Yeah. I got no words. Like I can't form sentences for like the first hour that I'm awake. And I'm just like, hi, good morning, I love you. What'd you dream about? What do you want to talk about today? We should do something. And you're just like, I'm gonna murder you. Like, how about you go make me coffee before I stab you in the face? Like, that's kind of a morning in the leg household. Okay, num sure. number two, uh, what's your middle name? Is there a story behind that? Mo now I will say, most of you know Sherry's middle name because I call her by that all of the time to the point a lot of you think that's her name. Well, uh, because that's my name. <laughs> so, uh, fun story about my middle name. It is Beth. Um, and there is a story behind that as well. It was mm -hmm. named after, um, friends of my parents. Um, their daughter, actually, who, weird coincidence, ended up being my brother-in-law's cousin. Um, That's true. <laughs> weird. But, so, um, the original plan for me was to be named Sherry Beth. Um, like Sherry hyphen Beth? Yes. Okay. And whoever did my birth certificate did not put the hyphen in there. So legally, my name is Sherry Beth. Um, but I was called Sherry Beth my entire, like, up raising, up, up, upbringing. upbringing. That's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> upbringing. My you see, you look at me as a, me as a <laughs> up, up, up. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing. I can't help you. <laughs> Oh geez, childhood. I was called Sherry Beth. I still am. Yeah. He calls me Sherry Beth. Yeah. Um, most of my family still calls me Sherry Beth. So yep. I answer to Sherry, which is legally my name. Um, and, and that's usually what I call myself when I introduce myself to people. But um, Sherry Beth. Yeah. Very fun. Yeah. My middle name is Joseph. Uh, I was named after my dad's best friend in high school mm -hmm. um, who actually uh, passed away in a car accident. Mm -hmm. And it was just kind of a, a guy who, who meant a ton to my dad and he wanted to kind of pass on his legacy by naming me after uh, Joseph Nicoletti. And so, Adam Joseph Legg, uh, that's my middle name. Um, what was your favorite subject in school? And we can go elementary, high school, college, whatever you want to do. Okay, um, I had two, I'm gonna go high school. Okay. Um, I had two, art and English. Yeah. Um, I always really loved both of those classes and I think a big part of that was the teachers that I had. Um, I'm still friends on Facebook with my English teacher from high school. Um, she keeps up with all of her students. She's just the sweetest person on the planet. Um, and so I think she really helped me like love English. Huh. Um, but, and really got me into like reading. I've always loved reading, but um, she really kind of opened up new like genres and stuff for me. And then my art teacher was fantastic in high school. So he is actually the reason that I studied interior design in college. Oh, I don't know that I knew that. Yeah. Very fun. Yeah. Um, so there must be something about English teachers because my <laughs> answer is English from high school as well. Mm -hmm. And it's because of my teacher. Uh, my teacher was Mr. Block, David Block. Uh, we also are still friends on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Uh, he you still was see him around town still see him around town. Yeah. Uh, I was not the best student. I didn't have the most uh, interest in high school, but he had a ton of interest in me and all of his students caring about um, learning and English. And he, I just remember, gosh, I just remember him doing everything he could to help me get it. Mm -hmm. You know, and from poetry classes to uh, all of the other things, like he was just... Man, he helped me love something that I absolutely did not love. <laughs> what a cool guy. Yeah. Um, okay, what do we got next? Ooh, first jobs. First jobs. Um, I, my first paying job yep. um, was at Chick-fil-A. I was 14 when I was hired. I didn't actually start working until I was 15. I think legally I had to be 15. Okay. Um, but I was hired like the week before my birthday. Uh -huh. And then I started 
shortly after. So my first job was Chick-fil-A. Um, so I knew, and this was the Chick-fil-A in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Yep, the Glenbrook Mall. The Glenbrook Mall. We've <laughs> gone there. Sherry showed me these hallowed grounds. Um, but also, your sister and brother worked at the same Chick-fil-A. Yes, they did. Like a whole family thing. It was a whole family thing. That's so cool. Yep. Um, mine was uh, actually at a hotel here in Anchorage. It used to be the Microtel Inn and Suites. I think it's rebranded now to something else. Um, and it was just uh, kind of working around the hotel. My mom was, I think, the director of sales there at the time and helped me get the job. And I actually ended up being at that hotel. That was the hotel that I was still working at when I finally met Sherry in person. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a friend of yours actually, this is a side note, but a friend of his actually picked this up from the airport because he was working. And so we literally met at the Microtel because he was working. And so... Yep. She took us there. And so I started there, and then I actually <laughs> went back there later on. Um, mm -hmm. I That was kind of the start of me into the hotel industry, and I, I loved that job. Like, I knew from the very beginning that, oh, I was going to love the hotel industry. Yeah, and you were really good at it. Thank you. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, okay, now, let's talk bad habits. <laughs> Do you have any? None. None. Perfect. Ooh, I don't Perfection. Have any bad habits. Um, I, I'm sure that I have a lot. The one that came to mind is um, procrastination. I am a procrastinator. Um, I get the job done, and I get it done well, but I will usually do it in the last, like, two seconds, and I'm just like, ah! Oh, the stress it causes. I know. You are a procrastinator. <laughs> and I'm the kind of person, if something starts at 7, I want to be there at 6.45, and you assume it starts at 7.02. I mean, I assume that we're leaving the house at 7. <laughs> It's not how it works. It's not at all how it works. Please, in the comments, tell her it's not how it works. Uh, me, again, I'm with Sherry. Like this, we can make a whole list and a whole video of like our bad habits. Um, I'm an I'm a nail chewer, and I know you're it's, a chewer in general. I am a chewer. My mom teethed me on hockey pucks. I blame her. You I chew on everything. I chew on everything. Pens, like any edges of glasses, anything that can be chewed on, I will chew. Yep. Maybe that's just my bad habit. Chewing. Chewing. <laughs> in general. So not just Except nails. not your food, because you chew your food like twice in this fall. Oh, great. Now my mom's going to be in the comments like, I've been telling you to chew your food for 40 years. I know, mom. <laughs> Jeez Louise. All right. Uh, when you were a kid, Little Sherry, mm -hmm. what was Little Sherry's dream job? <clears throat> did you have one? I did. I wanted to be a teacher. Really? I did. My dad was a teacher and I always wanted to be a teacher and then I realized that I would have to stand in front of people and speak and I said no ma'am and so um, that dream quickly went away but most of my childhood I wanted to be a teacher. I will say I think you actually would have been, if you could have gotten over that fear, a great teacher because <laughs> like all the years we worked with like four year olds at church, you always had such a good way of connecting with kids. You just made them feel, I think, safe and welcome. And so I think you would have been a great teacher. Thank you. Um, but the whole standing <laughs> in front of people, that's an issue. Yeah. For me, I maybe have the most Alaskan answer of all time. <laughs> I wanted to be an Iditarod musher. What? <laughs> I know. Shocking. <laughs> uh, I did. I wanted to be an Iditarod musher. That was... Uh, those were the heroes. I talked about this in a recent vlog here on our mm -hmm. channel. Um, growing up as a little boy in Alaska, um, Iditarod champions were the my heroes. <laughs> Those are the people that I looked up to. Mm -hmm. And so I cannot tell you in my mind the hundreds of times that <laughs> I mushed the Iditarod <laughs> in my head. Like, yeah. oh my gosh. For me, it was all about the Iditarod when I was a little kid, <laughs> for sure. Um, so what sports... Did you play growing up? Well, I am not athletic, even at all. Uh, my dad is extremely athletic and yep. passed on that gene to my sister and my brother and completely skipped right over me. Um, I am not athletic, even remotely, but my parents wanted us to be in some sort of sport, so I did play softball in, like, the little kid, like, the... Three, four, third, fourth, and fifth grade okay. sort of softball, yep. um, and I was a hundred percent the kid like picking the daisies out in the out in left field, looking for flowers. I, uh -huh. um, I was not interested in playing at all. Um, I think I also played t-ball for a hot second. Oh. I know my brother did, and then my brother went on to like baseball stuff. But um, I can picture you. <laughs> Just out in the outfield. Making the little, like, flower bracelets. Uh, sitting on the ground, <laughs> picking the grass. Coach like, Sherry, stand up. Sherry, back. Stand up. 
that was me. And then I think after the fifth grade, my parents were like, it's, it's fine. You don't have to do that anymore. Um, again, like my sister and brother did like track and stuff through um, high school, but I didn't do any more sports. And it is funny to me because like your dad also, like he was a teacher, but then he was an athletic director at a high school in Indiana, mm -hmm. like big deal. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> it's funny because you, not only are you not really athletic, you kind of just don't care for the most part about sports. I will watch basketball. Yeah. Um, again, Indiana, um, we were coaches kids. We were Jerry's kids. We were, um, we were on the bench with the team and or like right behind the bench like i grew up with basketball um and i grew up with most other sports because my dad is into all of the sports but i don't really care he he's had to explain football to me for the last 20 years um and i think i'm sort of almost getting it we've made progress <laughs> we've made progress i'm hopeful this is the year you guys but he loves to watch basketball with me because i know what's happening and not I only, know the calls. Not only do you know what's happening. I know when they foul before the rest know they foul. Every now and then, <laughs> you will pull out something. You'll be like, oh, yeah, that's so-and-so. And I'll be like, I am so attracted to you right now. <laughs> the old school, like, basketball players. Like, yeah. I can name them all because I knew them all. Amazing. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. All right, for me, I played lots of sports. Um, started with hockey yeah. uh, as a little kid. I think <laughs> I was, gosh, I don't remember... I remember the, the league was Adams, A-T-O-M-S. It's like the little kids, like learning to skate, like wobbly, hold on to hold the dashboards, hold the chairs kind of thing. Um, and so hockey was uh, my first sport. In fact, somewhere in one of our boxes, they made us like little hockey cards. And so there's a little Adam with a little stick. Um, I, I love so cute. I love playing hockey. I absolutely <laughs> loved it. What a great first sport. Uh, I will say though, few things in this world smell as bad as a hockey locker room terrible uh and then as i got older i played baseball i uh, played baseball probably actually the longest of all sports uh probably started junior high no maybe younger even elementary school played through high school uh and then i played football all through high school as well um hockey was hockey was honestly probably the one i enjoyed the most yeah just being like a little kid and <laughs> being outside in alaska and i feel like hockey is such a big thing here mm -hmm. um baseball and football were just kind of things you did in the you know summer and fall mm -hmm. but yeah so those were those are my sports yep you were also on a baseball team sort of with some friends a few years ago are we gonna talk about this <laughs> you said do or did you play dang it so it's i mean you play <laughs> all right so here we go so, so not horribly long ago some friends and i got the idea to join an adult softball league um oh, softball, yeah. we were sponsored by tasty freeze mm -hmm. and we named our team the just desserts so that when we beat a team we could say they really got their just desserts don't laugh. You're you're smirking. And here's the thing: we were so we were so horrible. We were just there to have fun. In fact, our last game of the season, we lost. We forfeited because one of our players had brought a beer onto the field, and the umpire was like, "You can't have that beer on the field. You got to put it on the sideline." He's like, "I'm not putting my beer on the sideline." And he's like, "All right, well then you're out of the game." And we didn't have enough players to continue the game, so we lost. So if you want to know how competitive the Tasty Very. Freeze Just Desserts were, Very competitive. And our logo we made was like a softball with like chocolate syrup and a cherry on top, so it's like a sundae. <laughs> It's not my proudest athletic moment, Sherry. I will it's amazing. Say, the tasty fruit. I'm glad you actually mentioned that. I'd forgotten. I think well, I've been, I had I think I've intentionally tried to block that out of my mind, to be honest with you. All right, next. Um, ooh, favorite fast food restaurant. Oh. Um we don't have it here in Alaska. I know where you're going. I'm going Chick-fil-A. I knew it. And a lot of people that work in especially fast food, um, are like, I'm never eating there again. Um, I still love it. I worked there for three years and I still love Chick-fil-A. It's always been impressive to me that that is the case, that you yeah. work in a, in a restaurant. I saw all of the secrets in the back yeah. and it is still some of my favorite food, <laughs> fast food. This is a hard one for me because to me, <laughs> there's pieces I want from different things. Mm -hmm. Hot McDonald's fries, y'all. <laughs> oh, that's delicious. But then Taco Bell, essentially everything on their menu, because all of their items are the same, just in different like arrangements. Correct. The same flavors and everything is all exactly Completely. the same. But it's delicious. <laughs> sure. It's, and Taco Bell, little known fact, this is proven science. Once you pass midnight, it only starts to taste better. I don't know how that works. Hmm. 2 a.m. Taco Bell may be the greatest food on earth. 
I mean, you're not wrong. I know. <laughs> uh, but like Burger King, the flame broiledness, I love that. And so this one's really hard to me. Um, if I had to pick, you have to pick. I might actually choose Chick-fil-A mm. only because of the novelty that we don't have it. Yeah, I do feel like if we had it, I, although, I mean, I grew up with it. I mean, it's I true. worked there all through high school. I, you know, loved it in college and we try to go every time we're out of state. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm still not tired of it. So I will say, I I really, really like Five Guys. The oh, yeah. fries are so good. We don't have that here either. We don't. Dang it. So I don't Get really have together, a great answer. Yeah. Um, okay. First amusement park you ever visited? Hmm. Um, I grew up near like Cedar Point and Kings Island, um, but I'm not a roller coaster kind of person. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know that I ever went. Um, I feel like my family might be able to speak into that better than me, but. I've never been a roller coaster kind of person, so I'm gonna say probably my first amusement park was Disney World. Cause you guys went there a lot growing up. We went there often growing up. Yep. Um, mine, Lake Compounds in Connecticut, and uh, went there with my family as a little kid, and we saw the Doobie Brothers there in concert. Ah, it was definitely a concert for my parents and like aunts and uncles. Doobie Brothers were not my jam. I love them today. <laughs> but I remember Lake Compounds um, as this kid who grew up in Alaska uh, just being like, this is the greatest place in the world. <laughs> like, yeah, I just remember it like blowing my mind. Uh, so yeah, Lake Compounds with the Doobie Brothers. I mean, sure. All right, next question. Mm -hmm. What is your go-to ice cream flavor? Mm. Mm-hmm. Ooh, I mean, I think it mostly depends on the mood that I'm in, but I'm going to say I'm probably never going to turn down a mint chip. That was going to be my guess for you. You do love mint, mint chip. chip. Yeah. Um, for me, it's anything chocolate peanut butter. Chocolate <laughs> peanut butter cup, chocolate peanut butter swirl. If there's chocolate and there's peanut butter and they're together, I'm probably going to eat it. Yeah. Um, if there's a chocolate peanut butter on the menu, that's almost always my go-to. Yeah. Oh, God, I love ice cream so much. <laughs> um, okay. I love this question. This is a little bit deeper than ice cream. Yeah. Where do you go when you're sad? Um, like mentally or physically? <laughs> Both. Answer however, like, yeah, mentally, that might be a very dark, very deep place. Um, but like, My brain where, gets dark. Where do you go or what do you do when you're sad? Um, it depends on what caused my sadness. Okay. Um, but I usually will escape into a book or into music. I have, um, <laughs> Ricky calls my sad bastard music. It's just, it's pretty much all depressing, but, um, I it's not pretty much all depressing. Love it. It's all depressing. It's all depressing. Um, but it speaks to my soul. Yeah. So I, get I, it. <laughs> I will, uh, escape into music or books. Um, physically when I'm sad, um, again, it depends on what caused the sadness, but I probably want to be near you. Hmm. That's a, quite a great answer. <laughs> hey, I'm glad you didn't say as far away from this guy as possible. No, I mean, usually, like, if, if we're not right next to each other, I want to at least be in the same room. Mm -hmm. um, to me, now it makes me look very insensitive, because to me, <laughs> my answer um, is on a drive. <laughs> away. away. <laughs> as far away as I can go. <laughs> really. But um, I'm, something about driving has always been therapeutic for me. Yeah. Uh, just like going on, it doesn't even have to be road trips, but here in Anchorage, when you drive south out of Anchorage, you head down the Chernigan Arm. Mm -hmm. And there's something about that drive, and I can't even tell you the number of times in my life yeah. that I have made that drive because like I just needed to clear my head or I was feeling sad or I was feeling anxious or feeling depression coming on. Um, so for me, it's almost always a drive, uh, but I do agree with you that the drive paired with like good, like emotional or emo, for me, it's like emo music. That's kind of where I go. Yeah. Um, and so that's, that's where I go when I'm sad. Right. Um, who has more shoes? It's not even a competition. I just bought like five new pairs of shoes and he still has me beat. Can I justify this? You can try. Let me try. <laughs> I have large feet. 
it is all the more reason for you not to have 37 <laughs> shoes. Okay, that's not where I was going, but you're exactly right. <laughs> but here's my thing, is it's difficult for me to find shoes that I like. Yeah. And my justification in my mind <laughs> is that when I find a pair of shoes that I like, oh, I should buy them, whether I need them or not, because when I eventually need them, I might not be able to find them. Right. And so. Which is valid. I mean, there's a lot of times that we go and like look you. for specific kinds of shoes for you and we can't find them. Can't find them. And so right. I feel like I have a large collection of shoes, but I feel like I have a shoe that would fit every situation or circumstance. Plus some. <laughs> I got rid of my electric blue Crocs. You did. I know. I'm very proud of you. <laughs> Just for you, Sherry. <laughs> um, all right. Do you have any hidden talents? Mm -hmm. um, this is one that I had to ask him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that I was like, I don't know. Um, I'm not the kind of person who thinks that I'm really very talented in things. Um, you brought up that I can sing. Mm -hmm. um, I will not ever sing in public, but I can carry a tune yeah. well. Um, I enjoy singing. Mm -hmm. um, you grew up in a very, like your family. I grew up in a very musical family. Yeah. yeah. Not just my immediate family, but like my extended family. So any like family reunions and stuff, there was always singing. By the way, as somebody who isn't used to big group family getting together and then everybody sings, that was an experience the first time. <laughs> It's when it's like, oh, we're getting together for the holidays, people are bringing instruments, yep. and yep. then everybody knows how to harmonize with each other. Yes, we do. <laughs> yep. It Welcome to the Amsets family. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So that, and that's just what I grew up with, um, singing, a lot of singing. Um, but you'd never, like, you never have done, when, all the times we've gone to karaoke, you've never done karaoke, you never really would. No, I will watch karaoke, and I will laugh at the people singing karaoke, but I will never have the guts to get up and sing it myself. Which is disappointing, because you do have a beautiful voice, and you know how to harmonize with everything, and you have <laughs> tried to teach me how to harmonize for our entire marriage. I'm like, listen to this line, I'm like, what they're singing, nope. and he's like, I don't, I can't hear it. The Lord made me to sing lead, apparently. I know, yep. <laughs> I know, for all the years. Um, but then, I also thought, and I don't know if it's really hidden, because, I mean, it's literally a big part of my job, but I'm very organizational. Mm-hmm. Um, I can organize pretty much anything. But here's the thing with you. This is what I'm going to expand on this a little bit because yes, you are very organized. That's like we, That's how my brain works. Like I see patterns and I connect them. The thing that I think makes you so great at your job is a little bit of a twist on that is that you look at the process of, of how something is done and you instantly look for ways to make that more efficient and better and quicker. And you know what I mean? And so it's like, when you look at something, you don't just see it as it is, you see ways to improve it. As, and, as it could be. And I've got to say, like, I've worked in the corporate world for a long time, and there are people out there who, like, that's their job, and you're as good as any of those people that we've hired. Like, you just, <laughs> Thank you. you naturally, you look at something, I mean, it, it baffles my mind, like, there's work projects that you're given, and... And you're just like, how are you going to do that? I'm like, I'm probably just going to do this and this and this, and then... And if we did it this way, and then if we did this this way, and stopped doing this, and then, and like, you just naturally see it's crazy. Yeah. It's amazing. So, again, I don't know if that's like a hidden talent, but it's something that I'm good at. It's something I enjoy doing. And here's the funny thing, because Sherry's is like, wow, she's so intelligent. That's amazing. Mine, not quite as intelligent. <laughs> I can tie a cherry stem in a knot with my tongue. Yes, you can. <laughs> Keep... This is a family channel. Keep it PG, Sherry Leg. You're the one who brought it up. I, I can, though, and I actually he think... He can. It's impressive. I don't know how he does that. Cause and I do it quickly. In fact, I do it so quickly that I have actually Googled what is the Guinness Book of World Records for the fastest ever? <laughs> because, like, it's seconds. Yeah, it's quick. It is fun. And sometimes I'll just do it because, like... I do fidget a lot. Like, I've been playing with a pen the whole video. And in yeah. some ways, like, that is another form of fidgeting. Yeah. And so, like, I'll just, like, cherry time up. Just tie it with a knot. Yeah. So, there's my hidden talent. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, ooh. This is a question for each other. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of cake would I want for my birthday? Mm -hmm. And what kind of cake would you want? So, you answer for me. What kind of cake do you think I would want for my birthday? I think that you would want a chocolate peanut butter or a German chocolate. Nailed it. Mm -hmm. um, nailed it. In fact... 
Uh, that's exactly, I. those would be the two cakes, hands down. Yeah. Um, it's like I know you. Yours, I, I know. <laughs> it's a lemon cake. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's a lemon cake. <laughs> and here's what's really funny. I don't like lemon cakes. I don't like German chocolate. You don't like German chocolate. <laughs> So often on our birthdays, we don't actually get the kind of birthday cake that we want because we can't share it. Yep. In fact, <laughs> uh, a birthday just a few years ago, I wasn't here for. My 38th birthday. Your 30th birthday. You were in, you were at um, Austin City Limits. I was at a music so, festival. Um, so a bunch of my girlfriends took me out for my birthday and um, they got me a lemon cake. No, not, I. You got the lemon cake. Arranged in advance. <laughs> For Sherry to get a lemon cake. I think it was also a unicorn lemon cake. Like it was. It was. <laughs> it was. I know. It was great. I planned this well. <clears throat> you did. Thank you. You tried to not give me credit for the lemon cake. How dare you, <laughs> Sherry? No more cherry stems and knots for you. Okay. Um, last question. Oh, Who sings more around the house? Okay. Wait one second. I intentionally put this question last because I think I knew you were going to answer so quickly. <laughs> Yeah. No. Uh-huh. Yeah. Here we go. Okay. If I am working and I have music on or I'm cleaning and I have music on or something that I'm usually humming along, you just sing randomly and make up songs from the time you wake up till you go to bed. And you sing more. I sing if there's music. Like, I don't feel like <sighs> I'm great acapella, so I always want music in the background and so if I don't have my airpods in or have music on my phone I don't just randomly sing. Dang it. I know. Uh, I really thought I was gonna get you, you with this no, one. No, you, you really didn't. And you're right. <laughs> Crud! And I'll sing in the car. It's one of, one of my favorite things is when Sherry's working from home and she's upstairs <laughs> and I'll be like maybe down here in the studio working and I you know stop working I just kind of listen I hear mm-hmm 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 I'm like what is that? Sherry upstairs humming. The, <laughs> Usually humming along to my music or singing along It's to my, my music. favorite. Humming Sherry is the best. <laughs> but you are right. I do. I am. I feel like I am constantly singing. You make up songs all the time. Especially about Missy. Missy's laying right there. Missy and me. That's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of songs about Missy. I could be a hit songwriter if somebody would just... Furriness. And her, her purry and furriness. That is the thing is I do write rhyme purr and fur a lot on okay. Missy's songs. Yep. yep. So friends... <laughs> 15 questions about us. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for 25,000 subscribers. Again, like we said earlier, it, that's insane. Yeah. That's absolutely crazy. We hope that you have learned something. Even if you've been here from the very early days, <laughs> I hope you learned something new about us today. Yeah. Just some randomness about us that uh, you didn't know before this video. Friends, we love you so much. <laughs> and we will see you on the next Lug Life video.